I keep bringing up the subject of volunteering. I think because it's, it's such an important part of my family's philosophy of life and, and certainly mine. That you don't just come onto this earth and, and exist. You, you do owe it to to those around you to, to share your your skills, your knowledge, your abilities to help those who are, are less able to do for themselves. Uh, this is a Wednesday, which is a bingo day over at the care center. And <laughs> I always have fun because they take their bingo pretty seriously. And uh, I find myself starting to feel that way too. But after they have bingo, they, they have exercise. And I'm here to tell you when they exercise, they have a, a balloon and foam bats. Sometimes they just kick or hit it around, but you get a better workout for, for the, the residents who, who need to have that mobility to, to build that mobility and that, that eye-hand coordination business. Uh, the bats help it a lot, lot more because they, well, it's like any tool. It extends your range. It gives you control you wouldn't have had because you didn't have enough upper body strength, say. That's a lot of them don't. Or they have limitations that have come about because of strokes, uh, multiple sclerosis, any any number of wasting or, or debilitating uh, conditions. Well, I'm I'm in the middle of this thing. The uh, the activities person who was there took advantage of the fact that I was there as a volunteer through the RSVP, the uh, retired. Uh, I still don't know what it stands for. Retired volunteer something something program the last one is program and the first one is retired that's a start in time i'll know what it means at any rate a volunteer and uh, it isn't a workout <laughs> if you don't raise the sweat i'm kind of drying off now but you can see my hair is all wet Ugh, look at my shirt this is a bunch of little i i knew i was going to do recording so i didn't want to you know, get my recording shirt all. I mean, I have another one in there, but I'm not going to get into it all stinky. At any rate, I bring this up not to uh, highlight my lack of physical uh, conditioning at this point. I do have a, a disease called Wegener's granulomatosis that I... Uh, contracted or that they don't know how it starts but I've had it since uh, around March of 2003 a little over six years and uh, with many hospitalizations uh, you you lose a lot of a lot of your conditioning and if you go into it in a mess in the first place which I did every time I went into the hospital I was all well, you don't go into a hospital because you're in the peak of fitness. You go in because you're sick. You have a problem. Well, you come out of it and you have a bigger problem because let's say you're in there a, a week. Amazingly enough, in a week you can lose. I, I don't know. I, I've never put a percentage on it. But I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't 50% of your condition, your, your endurance, your uh, ability to. So anyway, when you play with the elders, you play for good, for keeps. They're, they're pretty serious about it. There's a, a retired nurse who, who's very quiet. She's hard of hearing. and she's, she's old enough that she has a lot of conditions. I, I, I don't, it isn't necessary to go into what conditions. But anyway, you don't expect her to be an aggressive participant. Well, I'll tell you, you give the bat, you better be out of the way. She's she's in there. And then there's another lady who 
if she just sits there too, but give her a bat, my God. Those two are the most aggressive players in the in the circle. It does you good when you see that people who are well in some institutions their their warehouse, not in the care center where I volunteer, they're associated with the Lutheran Church and and uh, their motto is uh, in Christ's love everybody is someone. And, and they really live up to that motto. They they treat people by the golden rule. They're, they're very decent. Uh, the staff is very compassionate, very tuned into the needs of the, the residents. And, uh, they've instituted a policy of, uh, well, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, the building has spokes to it. It has a central place and then spokes out from it. And these spokes, there are four of them and they each have a name and they each are like little villages. That's how the residents are treated by the staff there. And the same people are always there. So especially for those people who have difficulty dealing with, uh, well, frankly, reality, who aren't all the way here with us anymore. That kind of normality is very important. I didn't mean to get into that, but it, it, it's very good to, uh, first of all, it's very good to get a workout. I need to get some physical, physical activity to help me. Uh, it's just that I didn't expect to do it as a volunteer in an exercise circle with people in their 80s and 90s. <laughs> Try it. I mean, honest to God, try it. They're not icky. You don't get cooties from old people. They're fascinating to talk with. They know about things you don't know about. Volunteer, you might find out. Uh, well, for example, when I was a baby, they had major blizzards in this part of the country. I don't remember it, but those those people in the center do. And they talk about about how people were rescued from their houses or how food was flown into them and uh, this being a rural area a lot of food was uh, and and for that matter food for the for the cattle uh, and livestock other livestock uh, would have flown into them and thrown into the <laughs> thrown into the thinnest part of the the snow which may have been in some places it was uh, as tall as a two-story building well, it's fascinating. These, these are things you can learn uh, just by volunteering. These are things that make volunteering so much fun. Uh, don't sit on your butt. Get up. Get out there and, and do something for someone else. I think that'll be it.